Good morning all. This Arduino can produce a pulse width modulated square wave output uh, with variable pulse width and I can use this potentiometer to vary that pulse width but it doesn't produce a one kilohertz uh, square wave output and that's what I want, one kilohertz. So today is all about me trying to tweak the PWM output from this Arduino Nano to make it one kilohertz. So let's put some power to the Arduino, uh, lob a sketch into it and check with the scope uh, what's coming out of one of the PWM pins. So this is the code I'm going to put in the Arduino. Uh, it's just a integer pot to an analog read of A7, that's where the pot's connected. Uh, divide that by four because an analog read is a 10-bit number that goes from 0 to 1023. When you write to a PWM pin, it's an 8-bit number, 0 to 255. So I'm going to write it to pin 3, the value that we got into pot. Let's compile and upload and see what we get. Uh, right, let's switch the scope on. Got a spike or a pin. It's a sort of DuPont pin in there. We'll put that in uh, pin three. Now I need ground, which I can get. If I stick it between those pins, it won't be able to swivel too much and short out, out on the adjacent VCC. Right, let's do an auto on there and see what we've got. And the problem here is that the uh, frequency of the PWM Oh, let's make sure it's just responding to the pot, which it is. It goes fully to 100%, fully to 0%, and obviously 50% in the middle of the pot's range of travel. But yeah, the problem is 490 hertz, and now I want 1 kilohertz. Now, I believe that the frequency is different on other pins. Let's check that out. Yes, here on a... Google search for Arduino PWM frequency, 490 hertz as we measured. Now on the Uno Nano and the Mini, or Pro Mini, uh, there's also a 980 hertz signal on pins five and six. So let's quickly check that one out. So here in the sketch, I'm gonna change this three in the analog right statement to a five and then we'll take a look at the output on pin five and check the frequency. That sketch is uploaded so I need to move this from pin three to pin five and there it is and it's not actually 980 it's 977. In fact I've got a feeling that in the documentation it's described as 976 hertz so it's not far off one kilohertz. Now for my EVSE, my electric vehicle uh, charger, I actually need one kilohertz, but there is a tolerance on it. It's from 980 to 1020, 1020 hertz. And 977 as measured here, or 976 as I seem to remember it being more precisely, is just slightly under the... Uh, lower level of the tolerance of an EVSE, a car charger, which requires that it's no less than 980. <laughs> so it's four hertz below. So what we really want to do is try and tweak the frequency to get it actually up to one kilohertz, exactly one kilohertz. So I've gone back to analog right on pin three, back to 490 hertz. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and double that by changing the prescaler setting. And that would take us from 490 to 980, I think, which is right at the bottom edge of the uh, tolerance for a car charger. So let's see if we can achieve that. So we need to go to the 80 mega 328p, there it is, 328p uh, data sheet. Uh, and scrolling down on here, there's all sorts of information on how the uh, 
hardware works for timer 2. Now timer 2 is what generates PWM for output 3 and also output 11. So let's take a look at what we need to change on timer 2 to uh, change this prescaler. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the uh, register that contains the prescaler information. <laughs> you do have to scroll down quite a long way. Uh, in fact, I'm going to click down here because we need registers. Right, here we are. I think it's here. Now these are the these are the settings for which output is producing a PWM. These COM2A1, COM2A0 and so on and so forth. A little bit further down and we get, yes, here it is. In TCCR2B there are the CS2 bit 2, CS2 bit 1 and CS2 bit 0 and they are for the prescaler. So here they are. So CS2 uh, bits 2, 1, and 0. Now I think the default is uh, 100 zero, zero on those three bits, which would be a, uh, a decimal 4. That does a divide by 64. What we want is a divide by 32, because we want to go twice as fast. So we want to change it from 4 to 3. So let's see what happens if I just shove 3 into uh, this register, TCCR2B. Now what I really should do here is uh, force the two lower bits high to put 1, 1 in there. So OR with 3 and force this bit low, so AND it with uh, all ones are not there and a couple of ones there, whatever that is, uh, so that we don't affect these other bits. They probably, the other way we could do it is we could read out what's in that register currently uh, just to make sure that we're not changing anything that we shouldn't be changing. But I think I'll do the anding and the oring. It is a bit messy, but uh, it's the best way to not affect the rest of the bits in this register. This is what I want to do. I want to take TCCR2B and make it equal, well, read TCCR2B and then change it so it's a read, modify, write to OR, which is a vertical bar. And I suppose I could do this in binary. Uh, oh, 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 and then set the bottom two bits. So one, one there. Uh, do I have to have B? I think it's. Um, 0B and then that and then I want to AND it with 0B uh, for binary so it'll be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 to pull bit 2 down and 1, 1 to not change bits uh, 1 and 0. I think that's right so let's put that into the Arduino and see what we get. Well, it's kind of sort of done something, but it's changed it to 30 hertz uh, from 490 hertz. So it slowed it right down. I actually wanted to speed it up. So I've got something a little bit wrong. Let's have a think about it. Yes, I think this acts kind of sequentially. So probably what I want to do is I don't want to I want to I want to zero out the bottom three bits. So if I ended with all zeros and then just push those two up. So yeah, I think what I want to do is change these to all zeros. And I'll do the AND before the OR. So let's take that, cut it out and stick it before the OR. Uh, no, I didn't want to return there, I wanted the space. I'll fix that and we'll see what it does. Yes, that's done it. So that's changed the prescaler um, to divide by 32 instead of divide by 64. Now that's actually given us 981 hertz, which is within the range of the EVSE uh, square wave spec of 980 to 1020. But since we're here and we're messing around with registers, 
we might as well do a further tweak to try and get that exactly to one kilohertz. Now, as I understand it, um, the Arduino is set up initially on timer two for PWM phase correct with a top value of FF and a bottom value of zero. Now I want to slightly tweak this top value. What happens is that the Arduino counts up from zero to FF. And when it gets to FF, it starts counting back down again, but flips the PWM output. So then it counts all the way back down to zero, flips the PWM output again, and starts counting back up to FF. Now if I got it to count up to slightly less than FF, it would do it a bit quicker. And you can do that because this mode here, which is mode one, counts up to FF. This mode, which is mode five or 101, counts up to whatever OCRA is. Now if we change OCRA, we can get it to count up to a value that's different to FF. Let's give that a try. And that means asserting or setting or pushing to a one, the value of this bit, WGM2, Waveform Generator Mode 2. So let's go to the register. Uh, right, yeah, so it's this bit. It's WGM2 uh, bit 2, I think that is. So it's in bit 3 of TCCR2B. So it's, once again, TCCR2B. So we just want to push up bit three, that's all we want to do. So I can add that to my code and that will change uh, the mode so that it no longer counts up to FF, but it counts up to whatever's in OCR2A. Let's try that. So that is, mm, well, we can bring down bit three here with a zero and then push it back up here, bit three, with a one. So and it to lower it and then or it to push it back up again. So let's upload that and see what the Arduino does. And it does precisely nothing. Now that's because um, OCR2A probably doesn't have a valid number in it. So let's set it to, well let's set it to FE, slightly less than um, what it was counting to before FF and just see whether that slightly tweaks the frequency. So I put this uh, statement in here, OCR2A is hexadecimal FE. Let's upload that and just see whether that makes any difference. Firstly, whether of course the PWM restarts, but yeah, whether that tweaks the frequency slightly. And yes, it does. That's interesting. So that's now 985 hertz. And that's because it, we're counting from 0, 0. It counts up 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 all the way up to FF normally when you uh, have the uh, PWM mode as it was. Now it's only counting up to FE, then it counts all the way back down to zero and then up to FE again. And every top and bottom, the PWM changes state. So that's actually what we're seeing. We're seeing the change of state. We just want to make it a bit quicker. So let's bring that FE down to, I don't know, F0. That might be too much actually, but let's give that a try, see what happens. Okay, so I've just recompiled it with F0 as the top count, and we're a bit high now. We're at 1.04 kilohertz. So all I need to do now is just sort of empirically modify that value until I get exactly 1 kilohertz. So I'll just play with that for a bit and uh, try and tweak it so that it's exactly 1 kilohertz. Well, there we are. So I was kind of working iteratively, so I went for F8. And yeah, it's giving me exactly 1 kilohertz. And the pot should give me full uh, PWM pulse width control over that one kilohertz square wave. So even with a uh, short duration mark and a long duration space, it's still one kilohertz. And similarly up at the other end of the scale. So yeah, with a couple of statements, we've managed to tweak the 490 hertz output from pin 3, PWM on pin 3, up to exactly 1 kilohertz, which is exactly where I want it. And uh, the code for that is simply in the setup, 
making some tweaks to TCCR2B. So the lower three bits of this are the prescaler. So we've gone from a, 60, a divide by 64 prescale to a divide by 32 prescale. That took us up to about 980 hertz. And then by slightly, oh, and then by changing this bit, bit three, we've um, gone to the other mode, where instead of counting up to FF, it counts up to whatever is in OCR2A. And by slightly reducing that from FF to F8, we're running the PWM hardware slightly faster and achieved the one kilohertz PWM output. Uh, yeah, so that's it really. That's all I planned to do today. I just wanted to be able to create uh, a one kilohertz pulse width modulation output. Now, actually, there's something quite interesting here because the values that you send to the PWM hardware can't be, well, they can be, uh, 0 to FF anymore. They have to be 0 to F8. This pot is still sending values 0 to F, uh, F. So the very last bit of travel of the pot doesn't do anything. But it doesn't matter too much. I mean, I can make adjustments for that in the software of whatever code I end up having to vary the pulse width. But yeah, as long as you send values to the uh, pulse width hardware between 0 and F8 now, or possibly... F7? No, I think F8 would work if you wanted the full 100% permanently on. Uh, then, yes, you'll get the full range of... I mean, we've slightly reduced the range of PWM granularity, I suppose you'd call it, from a full 256 different values to 248 or something like that. But uh, essentially that's it. One kilohertz coming out, possibly it's modulatable on pin three. Cheerio.